There's one. I feel like hitting this grade again today before I do some other fishing. It's been loaded with trout this week through some sort of, I don't know, some sort of crazy condition. I don't know, the weather, the flood, I guess, passed them through. First time I've ever seen it. Nice stocky rainbow. Just working a little piece of night crawler on a size 10 hook on a free line. Real simple. Yep, another one right away. You know, obviously they don't stock the rainbows in this grate. And they don't stock it in the creek connected to this creek either. They only stock browns in the creeks. So this is like a, a pot of rainbows that came through during flood conditions and normally shouldn't be here. You know, I've fished grates a lot and I've never seen this before. Just like in the last great fishing video. You know, they're still, they, they were there that time and they were there, they're there two days later when I'm fishing it right now. Try and get a hold on this guy and show him to you. Another nice, you know, standard stocky. It's about the size they stock them in or maybe a tad smaller. They stock them in. There we go. Just had one pop off. They're being extra picky this time, probably because I released so many in here two days ago. Just catching them and releasing them for fun, probably 15 or so. It's crazy, this pattern in here. This is only the second time I found a weird pattern in, um, well, great fishing. I've done a good amount of great fishing before. The other time was uh, I found two sunfish in a row that shouldn't be around here in a great green sunfish. You know, it's all pumpkin seeds and bluegill around here pretty much. There we go. Like I was saying in the last great fishing video, you know, two videos ago, it's not normal to find a school of rainbow trout around here in the greats. Normally, you know, when I used to fish greats, one trout would be like an extra special bonus. It would be rare just to get even one passing through these greats like this. But finding a school like this is just, I don't know, never seen it before until this trip and the trip before it. <laughs> oh, there's a sunny. Sweet. Just gradually drifting that bit of night crawler through, through, you know, all the little eddies down in there. Working it through every little stretch over and over again. It's all about angles and timing. That's a decent one. Eight and a quarter, pumpkin seed, maybe eight and a half. There we go, another little trout. Pretty sure the guys who stole this great panel, I mean normally there's a panel right here and you have to just fish through these holes. The same guys who wrote Revolt right there. I don't know, maybe they, they like fishing this too. It's been gone for a while, a couple of years. And other, this is probably the size I stock them in. So that's what makes me think those other ones are holdovers. And the 12, 13 inches are two year holdovers. I think I just got one off two pieces of corn, another trout. That's awesome. Been meaning to try that. Just been using pieces of Nightcrawler up to that point. Oops, man, so feisty. I'll hold on them here. Yeah, another average one. And two two corn kernels on a size 10 hook, just free lining it. Another one right away on the corn. That's so awesome. Right when it sinks down, they're hitting it. It's even better in the piece of worm. Probably because it's brighter. The water's a little murky. These great fish are usually pretty desperate. You know, corn is a normal bait though for trout and panfish. Another smaller one, first year stocky. Alright, another one right away off the off two pieces of corn. Right in that main current underneath me. That's a little bit of a better one. You know, I work really hard to find my patterns. And when I find special weird patterns like this that just shouldn't be there normally, you know, it, it really makes me happy. 
Oh, get a hold on them. Yeah, that's a better one. That's a holdover. Decent one. No 11 incher. There we go. It's fighting a little better. Oh, it's a nice size rainbow. Wow. <laughs> There's a serious holdover. And two pieces of corn again. You know, like I was saying in the last great video, I get big rainbows up north, but at a lakes like this, you know, one in the upper teens is like a trophy. It's just hard to find them in a put and take fishery that are multi year holdovers. These 13s are, you know, they're not rare, but they're uncommon. One's probably a solid 12, 12 and a half. It's a good one. Yep. Unreal. <laughs> you know, like I said in the last video, I've never seen a grate that's so packed with rainbow trout. It's just a unique pattern that I stumbled upon the other day. And they're just still in here. So I've been catching at least in a lot of them. Crazy. You know. I could keep catching them like this all day probably. There's a big school of them down there. They're hitting right away. I think I'm gonna go do some other fishing though, so this will probably be the last one for today. You know, they're still hitting and there's a lot more in there, but I'm done fishing for these great trout today. Kept a quick limit of five with no more than two longer than 12. You know, just some average size ones, not the biggest ones I was catching. You know, these trout are stocked by the tens of thousands in watersheds around here. I'm finding them in a really unique place in this great because of uh, because of the conditions, I think, because there was a flood and they passed through. But, you know, something I've never seen before. But as a whole, these trout are put in as a, as a renewable resource as part of a put-and-take fishery. And that's how most people treat them around here. All right, first cast. Came back the next day, maybe less than a day later. So I can try some other weird baits for these guys. I'll try some power bait and tomatoes and just... Anything I can for these desperate trout while they're still here. This is such a unique thing. Find a school of them like this, stuck in the grate. First one came off corn, just to see if they're still here. <laughs> there we go. You're just sitting on it. I definitely got a bite off that piece of tomato, just a shred of it, which I think is really funny, but that tomato is definitely slower at best this guy's a little heavier he's a holdover so i switched to the power bait quick because usually the power bait's killer and i want to try it out compared to the corn the corn's been really good best one so far better than the worms the power bait's decent i don't know if it's good as the corn i have to keep trying it at least in this situation yeah, that's 11 11 and a half this power bait's actually suddenly a lot hotter than it was with the first cast more like what I'd expect. Garlic power bait's usually killer for stock trout. I'm using it just with a tiny piece of split shot, just because it's a lot more buoyant than the other baits. So just a little trout. But still, I think the corn's a little better because they strip the power bait easier, at least in this situation. Some situations it's hard to beat the power bait though, especially for late season stockies when they're under pressure in a lake. Switch back to using the corn. It's just way better in this situation. It's cheaper and firmer. I got a lot of hits on the power bait, but they're mostly stripping me. It's, they're being real picky right now, probably because I caught and, released, caught and released so many of them. It's another rainbow. Another thing off the corn. Oh, <laughs> cool. Finally got a sunfish off of two pieces of corn. That's funny. Another pumpkin seed, a smaller guy. You know, six inch or whatever, six and a half. Trying out the worm again. Just a little shred of worm. Power bait also isn't the best in this spot because it, it doesn't sink very well. It takes like 45 seconds to sink, so I was using a piece of split shot with it that I don't have to use with the corn and the worms. I can just free line it with corn and worms, so. And this, this split shot is not as good with picky fish. They can feel that, and they tend to drop it a lot more often and, and pick at your bait. 
which also doesn't go to the power bait because it's a dough bait, so they just pick it off. So I'd rather use the corn and the worms here for sure. I don't want to knock the power bait though. It's really good in the right situation. Just doesn't seem like it's right in this situation. Oh, yeah, there's a solid one. Another piece of another rainbow on a piece of worm. That's a good one. Eleven and a half maybe. Feels like I keep getting all these little pecks from chubs now that I'm using the worm. Yep, got one. <laughs> No, baby bluegill. Huh, wouldn't have guessed that. There we go. These trout are starting to get real educated, so I think I might make this the last one. Picking up one here or there, but it's just not as hot as it was earlier. Seeing hard way too many. It won't get cleaned out as easy by the next guy though. Get a hold of him, real feisty. Man, calm down. Yeah, the last one hit on a, just a bit of worm. 